and welcome to this presentation on the stable carbon and nitrogen isotope results for faunal samples from Ashapanar. Ashapanar is a site located in uh, Turkish Thrace, just along the Bulgarian border. Uh, it was excavated starting uh, in the 1980s by Istanbul University and the uh, German Archaeological Institute. Uh, and excavations yielded uh, a number of different layers, um, mostly dating to the 6th millennium BC. Uh, this presentation focuses on especially uh, layer 7 to the very beginning of the 6th millennium where uh, a ditch was excavated, filled with many uh, remains, including lots of animal bones. Uh, here's a picture of the ditch. And here is a, um, a range of animal bones. This analysis was done by Dr. Norbert Benecke. Uh, and you can see uh, he uh, found for uh, many layers of the sixth millennium, uh, a range of wild animals, and uh, of course the expected domestic. Uh, the research was done at uh, Koch University for the isotopic analyses, and here you can see um, the uh, results uh, and the variability that these animal species, both a wild and domestic, um, the variability that they show uh, is represented in this chart. It's much easier to see uh, in this format, uh, as you can see. Uh, and I'd like to uh, discuss uh, this in a little bit uh, to provide some background. First of all, uh, when we look at the humans, we see that they cluster at the top of this hierarchy uh, with the highest delta nitrogen 15 values. Omnivores, including fox, dog, pig, and wolf, uh, seem to cluster right underneath the humans. Uh, although there is one dog uh, with a slightly lower value of around seven for the delta nitrogen 15 <clears throat> value. And this simply shows that not all dogs were equal. Moving on to the herded animals and ruminants, uh, we can see that the sheep and goat uh, cluster quite tightly uh, with regards to the uh, delta carbon-13 value. Uh, but that's not so for cattle. Uh, there's a large um, variability uh, when we look especially at the delta carbon-13 uh, and a few individuals that are uh, much less negative uh, and this could be a result either of different herding practices uh, or perhaps uh, foddering uh, that uh, took place uh, with regards to these animals. Um, the fact that the lipid residues for the ceramics yielded uh, a large quantity of um, milk or dairy uh, results uh, is also significant and might actually be uh, in connect in somehow related to the fact that we're finding um, these uh, different practices for some of the cattle. Also looking at this, we can see that a few of these cattle, especially those that are of less negative values for delta carbon-13, uh, these ca cattle also seem to be relatively high for the delta nitrogen-15 values as well. Uh, and this applies also for a couple of the sheep. Uh, and uh, this might be, in fact, a result of practices such as uh, manuring, uh, but the sample sizes are small and we need more to be able to say this with certainty. Here we can see a signature in red for the cervids as one large cervid and one a roe deer. Uh, and we can see that it gives a background signature for um, the, the site for um, uh, terrestrial herbivores. Um, in green, you can see the great bustard, uh, a bird that actually um, eats lots of invertebrates. Up to 40% of its diet can be invertebrates, which might explain uh, the reason why the value is quite high for the delta nitrogen 15. While the bear uh, is somewhat surprising. Being a large terrestrial mammal, we would expect it to have a higher value, but um, uh, studies have shown that um, bears can in fact have a primarily um, plant-based diet in some situation. Here's a final chart showing the uh, error bars uh, for the situation and showing the variability. This has to be considered a pilot study uh, for present until we expand our uh, sizes, our da the data sizes, but it does show that this research successfully can be taken out and done in Turkey. Thank you very much.